Hello and welcome to the show! I'm here at the top of Mount Chiliad for some more downhill chaos on GTA 5. Our first vehicle today is the Police Voxel Insignia. I saw this car come up on uh, on, on the mods website and uh, I fancied having a go. It's like a little bit, a little bit different. I've, I haven't had a police car go down Mount Chiliad on the uh, PC version of this game. So I figured it'd be interesting to see where this car would fit in amongst all of the the vehicles. Now, the first attempt, admittedly, things went a little bit wrong, uh, running a bit wide through the first corner. I actually quite like this car. I could, you know, even dealing with these first few corners, I could tell this car was actually pretty good when it came to uh, to driving down Chiliad. However, it did have one slight downside. It had a fondness for going up on what two wheels. Not like the M3 that it would just roll. This just had a fondness for going up onto two wheels. And the problem is when it did that, uh, of course you kind of lose quite a bit of control and then you'll run wide and you know, you catch the back end on the rock face down here. We've seen many a car have a very similar accident through there. You just run that little bit wide, you're going to get in a world of trouble. Uh, slightly bouncing off the heads of some hikers. Well, that's all it takes to throw the car. <laughs> Of course, it's amazing how little uh, effect something has to have to cause a really big crash down here, especially on this opening part. It only threw me out a tiny bit wide, but in throwing me out wide, it bounced me off a fence, and then that flung me across the other side, and you just don't have time to react to the speeds you're going to try and gather it all up, and hence why the Voxel has ended up, well, down the down the side of the, uh, the mountain. This next one, one of the most bizarre crashes I've had on uh, downhill cars. The rear of the car just gets flicked off the top of the jump, and I don't know why. I was a long way on two wheels and slightly out of shape and perhaps a little slower coming down there than I have been before, but uh, yeah, the rear end of the car just got launched up into the air, so he nosedived it into the floor and did some flips and so on. That's a very, very peculiar one. Not had that happen to a car particularly before down there, so yeah, a little bit of a confusing one. Again, that turn was to become a big issue for the uh, for the Vauxhall, with its tendency to just get up onto two wheels, and it just gets onto two wheels at the wrong time, enough to force you wide, hit the rock face, and we do that. So I was having a, a few issues trying to carry good speed through this section, but not get it on two wheels and not have, yeah, this, this sort of thing happen. Uh, we have had vehicles have, have issues here before, it is a, a fast part of the course. The Vauxhall though is perhaps one of the most noticeable ones that I've had issues trying to get through that section. Also, once it started spinning there, it did not want to stop. I was trying everything to try and get the thing to, you know, back under control. It, nope, it, it, it decided it was going for a spin, and uh, that was that. The Curse of the Hikers, yeah, that was still in full effect. Going on down here, I managed to hit a hiker, and then a cougar gets wedged under the car and fires it up at a very peculiar <laughs> angle. Not the first time we have seen uh, wildlife get stuck under vehicles and fire them up. Normally at that part of the course, because they are going, you are going so fast, probably the fastest you will go at, the, at this at this sort of circuit, this route. It is quite rare though. Yeah, just got a little bit unlucky. This was another turn, was having a few issues getting the car up onto two wheels. Kind of like just the combination of the, the camber of the road and the speeds you're taking, and sometimes the little bumps and little uh, little airborne sections. It was just enough to cause the car to get a little bit unhappy. You'd go on two wheels, and then you'd end up sort of all, all out of shape. This time around, the car didn't get flicked up into the air. I just pushed it too hard. I thought I could take a bit more speed than I could through that section. And the answer was very much no. You just run a little bit wide on that landing of the jump, and we've seen many a time the uh, cars will get fired off the course. It took a little while to get a, a clean run out of the insignia. As I said, it was it felt like a pretty decent car to drive. On the whole, just had to be careful not to get it too unhappy because it is going to go up onto two wheels if you push it too hard. And on this run here, you can see how hard I was trying because <laughs> there was a lot of time spent. That's a lot of time spent on two wheels through that corner. Uh, you could get away with it because the car would never it would never roll over from going up onto two wheels. The, just the fear was if you got it up onto two wheels that um, also, certainly on some of the narrower sections of the track you might just lose control of the car or just run a tad wider than you wanted to and at some places you can't afford to get away with that. Other places is a little bit more lenient. You can get away with spending a bit more time on uh, two wheels. I mean, aside from its tendency to, to get up onto its side, it actually dealt with the bumps pretty damn well. I didn't have any massive issues. It wasn't being really thrown about. I mean, that landing of the jump there, really, really nice 
for a, a normal road car, essentially. It was just that it wanted to get up onto its side. Again, once we got the uh, the speed sorted down there, it bounced the back end up ever so slightly, but nothing major, and that's a very common thing for cars to have the uh, be bounced back up on the landing through that uh, section. Second to last corner here, a very, very bumpy corner. I was a little afraid that the Vauxhall may have some issues. It didn't. It got around there with no problems, no silly two-wheeled antics, and it is across the line, and again, the mountain bikers are taking pictures. I'd never seen them do that until a couple of episodes ago, and now they're just permanently sitting around there wanting to take pictures, it seems. Either way, the uh, insignia made its way down the course. I quite liked it. I think it had plenty of it had decent acceleration, plenty of speed. Police cars are actually pretty damn fast on this game. So, yeah, this one, this this held its own. Just a you know, little tendency to go up onto its side uh, from from some corners that you had to be you had to be aware of. Once you'd got that sorted out, though, yeah, a pretty good choice of vehicle really for uh, <laughs> barreling down the side. Of, uh, of Mount Chilia. I mean, damage-wise, I smacked the rear up of the car, but that was just from coming across the line. The rest of the course, you know, no no real issues when it came to uh, completing this descent. So, yeah, Insignia, pretty good vehicle. Up next, well, I saw someone had done a Toyota Prius mod, and it just had to be it had to be tested out in the only way that we know how, and that is, of course, taking it to a completely inappropriate area. Yep, the Prius is going down Chiliad as well. Uh, this car, uh, I was curious to see what it could uh, what it could do. Uh, interestingly, if um, if you do normally, this would make the car spit fire. If it's possible, of course, Prius isn't going to spit fire. What it does is it makes the Prius sort of slightly rock. Very very peculiar. I've done that with many vehicles. Never had I had a car just sort of lightly bounce on the spot very very weird from the uh, from the Prius now the immediate feeling that I got from this car is it wasn't really built for this kind of uh, thing whereas the insignia I was quite impressed on its first run that it, it kind of dealt with the bumps and the landings of stuff even you know even with ridiculous amounts quite well this uh, no no the suspension on this is is not built for surviving Chiliad. It is, feels like the suspension is far, far too stiff on the uh, Toyota. As uh, this time we just run a little bit wide for that first corner. As we start going sideways, it digs in and flips. It, it does not like the bumps down here whatsoever. Turn one. Turn one, we often get into trouble if you run a bit wide. Some cars can get away with it, and the Insignia could get away with running a bit wide across this sort of rock here. The Prius could not. You just couldn't do it. If uh, As soon as you went across there, you were going to have an accident. This one, again, you know, we, we kind of ran across with two wheels on that, so the car was always going to flip. If you run with all the wheels across the rock, you're going to completely lose control of it on the landing. It should, yeah, <laughs> it just couldn't deal with, uh, with that particular part of the track. Basically, it got stopped before plummeting all the way down the cliff, but uh, there we go. Now, the other issue with the Prius was its uh, fondness for falling over. It actually fell over in quite a peculiar manner. It was it was very, very quick to roll over onto its roof. Unlike with the Insignia and to an extent the M3 that we had last week, that uh, we kind of go up onto two wheels. The M3 would go up onto two wheels and then fall over. The Insignia would just go up onto two wheels and kind of stay there. This was sort of on two wheels, then we're going to fall over. Almost immediately, you had very, very little time to try and uh, catch this car. It means that it tumbles spectacularly well when <laughs> falling off Chiliad. It, it tumbles like with the best of them. However, as far as actually driving it goes, yeah, it was kind of almost a, a very, very sudden, uh, we're going up onto two wheels and now you've had a big crash. You don't have time to do anything about it. So you had to be quite careful because it didn't like the bumps. As I said, second to last quarter here, very, very bumpy. Amazingly, I've just about started to get the hang of saving it. The problem is, once you have saved it and you're out, you're far too wide. Through that, that section and we're off, we're off the course anyway. Uh, yeah, took a, took a few attempts to get the hang of the Prius. The fact is, the best way to kind of get this car down Chiliad, you have to be careful and you have to drive a bit slower through some of these corners. And I will be honest, the Prius is not exactly the fastest car in the game. It's not particularly quick accelerating or top speed wise. And you have to be really, really quite careful with this. If you wanted it to get it down the course without rolling over, you, you have to be careful. I mean, it's getting up to... I think it just got above 60 miles an hour. I mean, we've seen, I think the, the Insignia was something like 70 odd up, up towards 80 miles an hour we've seen cars do down there. It, the Prius, as you would imagine, does not particularly have the speed. And then combine that with the fact that you can't attack any of the corners particularly, 
Yeah, it's not exactly the best choice of vehicle for going down Chiliad. Uh, very slow speed two wheeled moments out of the hairpin. At the, yeah, at the higher speed sections, if it goes on two wheels, the chance of you catching it are, are practically nil. At the lower speeds, you can just about get away with it, as I was playing it very, very risky down there. Yep, it wanted, it wanted to uh, roll over, but I managed to gather it all up. Curiously, and one very odd thing, this car hated the small bumps. These larger jumps, and it actually landed them relatively well, which is is weird. Admittedly, that one there I did land a little bit on the on the nose of the car. But as we come down here, yeah, I will admit we're not going massively fast here. But it didn't get you know the car didn't get fired up into the air. It didn't get massively unhappy. So the the larger jumps we we're okay on the landing. The the the, the small just sort of the bumps and the ruts around the course. That's what the Prius couldn't deal with. So, yeah, that's slightly odd. Again, around this uh, second to last corner, had to be careful. And the final turn, there just wasn't really the speed in the vehicle around the final turn. And then it scared the, the mountain bikers yet again as we go across the line and go for a spin and then plummet off the cliff and flip. And I'm not even sure if the tree didn't help me with that, <laughs> with that flip, the way the car just suddenly twisted. The Prius was not exactly built for uh, for going down Chiliad. The suspension just couldn't deal with the course. Combine that with its general lack of power and speed. Not really the uh, the best choice of vehicle for getting down getting down the course. It did make it. In the end, you just have to be uh, very careful with it. Our final vehicle, though, certainly has got the power and the speed. It is a Renault Formula One car. This, you would expect to go very, very quickly down Chiliad. However, we have had Formula 1 cars go before. The Lotus 49 went down here. Okay, not as fast as these uh, more modern Formula 1 vehicles. However, that really struggled. The suspension just couldn't deal with the demands of the course. So I was kind of curious to see how this car would do. And immediately, there was a uh, slight issue. As we come through Turn 1, I promptly managed to uh, roll the Renault and we'll skid along on our, kind of on our roof. The issue with this car for, for going down Chiliad is, as you can see, there is an awful, awful lot of steering lock. Now, the reason for this, well, GTA 5 is not exactly built to deal with Formula 1 cars, and at high speeds, you need the steering lock to give the car, you know, kind of the, the grip you would expect from a Formula 1 car. Problem is, at low speeds, that steering lock makes the car change direction absurdly fast and is incredibly hard to judge corners. I mean, that one there, I turned into the corner where I would with a normal vehicle, but of course, I've got so much steering and grip that in this, we just went straight over the rock face and had a big accident. So yeah, that was something to be careful of. Again, another great example of it. I, I landed the jump and things were going fine. The bushes kind of dragged the car ever so slightly sideways. I tried to, to gather it all up, but the steering lock was so massive and the grip was so massive that it just fired me off the other side of the cliff. Uh, also, trying to get back up the hill in reverse then. <laughs> no, there is apparently no grip when it comes to uh, going in reverse. You're much better off trying to... Uh, <laughs> to go forwards up there. Yeah, the, the steering lock meant that you had to be very, very smooth, had to do very, very small movements. Again, I was trying to make sure I avoided the bushes and unleashed all of the power at once and things went a little bit wrong. That was not the steering, that was that was poor driving from me on, uh, <laughs> on that one. Big two-wheeled moments in the Renault again when I was pushing things a little too hard. That I just launched, I, I fired it out of the corner and wasn't pointing quite in the right direction. And if you do that with this car that accelerates so very, very quickly, you're going to go tumbling off the mountain. So, yeah, I, I tried. I tried to, to get the most out of the car, tried to use the acceleration there, and just wasn't quite pointing in the right direction. And by the time I figured out things were going wrong, yeah, I wasn't going to be able to, uh, to stop that one particularly. Again, I was trying to make the most of the speed. I mean, there is huge amounts of grip in this car. It was an impressive, impressive roll from the uh, Renault there. I mean, if I was on Burnout Paradise, I'd be very pleased with uh, that one. But uh, on this one, on this on this course, not, not not really the ideal thing. Took a few a few runs to get the hang of the car. Once you did get a hang of the steering, you just had to be very, very smooth with it. You had to do lots of small, small steering movements with it to get it to kind of, you know, keep, keep the momentum and not have a big accident with the car. And when you launch it down here with all the acceleration the vehicle has, you can't actually get up to a massively high top speed. The problem is there's a little bump that you hit in, in the Formula 1 car. So I spend lots of my time airborne going down there, so I can't actually get up to a particularly high speed. And you can see the levels of grip and the corner speed that you can take with this car. Nothing else can, really. And again, I was kind of hoping I was going to get above 100 miles an hour with this. I simply couldn't because every time I got my car in a position where I could, we ended up in the air, and that didn't quite work. But I mean, the carry in the corner speed with this vehicle, you could, you could 
take a lot of speed through these turns and of course as soon as you've gone out of a turn such phenomenal acceleration from the Renault again not quite so much this time around so they could make the corner and not go sailing off into the scenery and you have to be careful on the landing here as you see the car get chucked up into the air when I mean, the advantage of the steering lock is if you are having a big sideways moment you could bring it all back together again if you knew what you were doing and that time there I saved it a lot with the rear of the car going up in the air I mean, it's incredibly fast around that second to last corner we're on two wheels around the final turn and the Renault is across the line and still the uh, mountain bikers are hovering around <laughs> The, uh, yeah, the Formula 1 car was really fast. The, the Lotus 49 had all sorts of suspension issues dealing with the course. This didn't. The, it dealt with all of the bumps and all of the demands uh, that the course could throw at it. One, you just had to get used to the steering. Once you got used to the steering, once you were smooth enough with the steering on the opening, on the, on the slow parts of the course, if you like, you could make the most of it when you came to the faster parts of the, uh, of the rally. And, yeah, it was fast. It was really very, very fast. And as you can imagine, it is the quickest car of the day. In fact, it is the quickest vehicle ever to go down, or four-wheeled vehicle, I should say, to go down Chiliad because the Enduro and Electro that beat it are the two bikes, and we know how absurdly fast the bikes are. The F1 car is the only four-wheeled car to ever beat a motorbike. Even the Vindicator that, uh, well, it wasn't a very good motorbike. It was still quick down here. Uh, it's quicker than the... Um, yeah, it's quicker than the Adder and so on. The Adder was with the top speed mod and everything. The T20 uh, is, you know, two seconds off that Formula 1 car. And that was even with fighting the slightly interesting steering. So, yeah, the F1 car, very quick down Chiliad. The Insignia was actually really impressive as well, getting down here. There's only a second off that Lotus 49. You know, a 27.8 is a good time for a normal a normal road car, if you like. So, yeah, I mean, it beats the Maserati Gran Turismo, the Holden Monaro. That's a good time from the uh, from the insignia estate car especially considering its uh, fondness for getting up onto two wheels i was i was impressed i was very much impressed with that car yeah, 23rd is definitely definitely a good time it's quicker than a ferrari 458 going down <laughs> going down mount chiliad so uh, yeah there we go and the prius uh, it didn't do so well it did not do so well down this course a 143 it's a tenth of a second faster than the monster panto it's three seconds down on the slam van that's the slam van that has practically no brakes the, the prius's suspension is is not built for, for dealing with chiliad it does go quicker than the uh, the drift cars the rx7 schwarzer stratum and so on but um yeah it's just it just couldn't deal with course even even the two cv is only a couple of seconds off it and that two cv had absolutely no speed whatsoever the prius just couldn't couldn't deal with the demands of the course but uh yeah there we go <laughs> The F1 car, mighty fast. It could deal with the bumps and the demands of the Chiliad course and sets a very, very impressive time. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. I'll put a link to all of the mods that I've used in the description so you can download them. Have a go with them yourself. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye.